Hey, this is John from Alloy211. Today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about The Devil's Advocate. Not the film, although the film is fine. Keanu Reeves is quite good in it. We all like Keanu Reeves, but not talking about the film. I wanted to talk about the origins of The Devil's Advocate position inside the Catholic Church, and maybe how we could apply that sort of thinking today, and not religiously, but to other ideologies or other matters that we are thinking about not just say the canonization of saints, but it's a nice logical and rational position to take whenever you're looking at any sort of problem or not even that, just say your opinion about something. I'll go ahead and start out with the Webster's New World Dictionary definition for devil's advocate, which one, an official selected to examine critically the facts and raise objections in the case of a dead person named for beatification or canonization. Two, a person who upholds the wrong side or an indefensible cause, perversely or for argument's sake. Which, I would say is the number two definition that we generally look at it today. That maybe the person is not necessarily arguing for any benefit for anyone, but just to be a contrarian. And I, I think that's generally how we see it today. When you say someone's being a devil's advocate, you maybe think, hey, that guy's kind of being a jerk and he's just arguing this point, not because he believes in it, but because he kind of wants to just be a butt. Whereas that's not necessarily where that position originally orig originated from in the Catholic Church. And it really comes from a, a much more logical point of to be very clear that we are making the best decision or the decision we're making is the correct one. And now I'll go over a little bit of research that I did from the Britannica Encyclopedia website as well as a few different Catholic websites. This is where the devil's advocate position or originated. Devil's Advocate was an official position in the Catholic Church, one who argued against the canonization of a candidate in order to uncover any character flaws or misrepresentations of evidence favoring canonization. During the canonization process, the Church employed someone that was called the Promoter of Faith, popularly known as the Devil's Advocate. This was a canon lawyer appointed by the Church authorities to argue against canonization of a candidate for sainthood. It was this person's job to take a skeptical view of the candidate's character, look for holes in the evidence, to argue that any miracles attributed to the candidate were false. The official office was established in 1587. Uh, let's see. It was first mentioned during the canonization of St. Lawrence Justinian uh, under the reign of Pope Leo between 1513 and 1521. In 1983, Pope John Paul II greatly reduced the role of the office in the canonization process. Now, what is that saying? That's saying that the devil's advocate's original position, the reason why they call it the devil's advocate is because they're taking what would be maybe viewed as the devil's position against this saint, against this person who is in line for canonization. And so what they need to do is look at every aspect of this person and the things that have been attributed to them and look for how it could be false or maybe how it is false. Whether they agree with that position or not, that doesn't matter. They need to take an absolutely objective position and say, hey, this person shouldn't be because of this, this, and this, and this. Whether they actually agree with that or not, they're looking at all the reasons why not. Now, how or why should we try to maybe use this today? Well, if we say, let's think about if they applied this in the engineering of the Titanic, for example. You know, looking at those bulkheads. Should those bulkheads go all the way up to the deck? Well, no, it'll probably be fine. There's no reason that those things would flood over the top. Well, let's say you had a devil's advocate position in that engineering group, although I guess you probably wouldn't call it a devil's advocate. You'd maybe call it quality control assurance. Quality control assurance. Um, they looked at it and said, well, but what if? You know, what if is, this happens? And it's kind of taking that same devil's advocate position of, well, I understand you say this probably won't happen, and more than likely you're correct. But let's go ahead and look at all the scenarios where it could. And that's one application that we could use, say, today or maybe a hundred and some odd years ago. But another place that we can use it is in confirmation bias, because we as people want to believe what we believe is correct. But the problem is when you start to get into your own opinion about things, your opinion can be wildly incorrect because you're always going to look at the things that favor your opinion as opposed to the things that are against your opinion. So to say, try to eliminate your confirmation bias, if you took a position where you're looking at all the aspects where you could be wrong and really investigating those, well, then you'll come to a, at least a much clearer position and maybe a less biased position than what you had before that. And a good example, and kind of bringing it back to guns that I can use in my own life, is how I felt about the G3 compared to the FAL. 
at one time I really felt the G3 was far superior to the FAL. I mean, they're generally close, but the G3 definitely takes the FAL. But the reality is, you measure them objectively between all metrics, and they're about the same. Now, it's just I really enjoyed shooting the G3 more than the FAL. It's my own personal opinion. But I didn't look at it as my own personal opinion. I looked at all the reasons why, and I liked the roller delayed action. Why this one is better than this one. Without actually looking at it objectively and picking apart the reasons why, or the things that about the object, the G3, which I liked, which were actually it had its own flaws. But I was looking past those because, hey, I think it's better. Well, if I take in that, say, devil's advocate position and really picked it apart, I would see, well, they both have their pluses and their minuses, their flaws and their better points. But in all reality, they're about equal. And if I'd taken that position earlier, at least I'd have a less biased position. And we could use that in all kinds of applications from opinions like that to interpersonal relationships to just judgments of people, although you shouldn't judge people. It's not cool to just judge people, but when you're looking at it, you know, hey, oh, this seems like a really good person. Well, it's because I'm looking past all this and this and this. So not that I'm advocating judging people in any way. I'm just saying interpersonal relationships could even benefit from it. Think about if we had this position in the government, if we had a devil's advocate cabinet position that every time the president or anybody else in the executive branch came up with these ideas, this person stopped and said, hey, wait, let's look at all the possible negative ramifications that we could have from this. That doesn't mean that I agree with them or say that that's what's going to happen, but maybe we should look at that a little more deeply before we just jump right into it, especially when we're, say, spending billions of taxpayer dollars. But like I said, I just kind of wanted to go over the origins of it, how maybe we could apply it in our own lives, and just a different perspective on The Devil's Advocate, that it is not necessarily just a good Keanu Reeves movie. Okay, well, maybe not good. Decent. Keanu Reeves is Keanu Reeves in it, and he's pretty good, so... Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like. And if you watch some of my other videos and enjoy those, I'd appreciate you subscribing. So thanks and have a good day.